going to look at using Cardo CSS in Cardo. So you can do a lot with Cardo's styling area in the user interface here with mostly point and click and say categorizing things. Um, you can do all of that. Um, but there are some situations where you might need a little bit more control than what um, Cardo's interface gives you. And in those cases, you'll write a little bit of code, and writing that code will let you do some fun things, such as changing the styles based on the zoom level or based on specific attributes. So. The way you'll do this is down in the bottom left of the screen. You should see this toggle between values in Cardo CSS. Values is this um, this point and click interface. If you click it over to Cardo CSS, it's just some code, and that's all you get. Okay, so um, but this code that you see here directly relates to the markers that you see on the right. For example, marker width is 7, and that is the width of the markers on the map. Same for fill, the marker fill, marker fill opacity, and so on. So if I wanted to get rid of the marker line, the outline on the marker, I could make this zero and hit apply. And you should see that the outline goes away. There's no longer an outline on these markers. If I wanted to make the markers larger, I can do that too. Well, f at first I will use a pretty large value to see what happens. And if you don't want to come down here and click apply every time you make a change, you can uh, either press Control S or Command S, depends on what type of computer you have. But I just hit Control S. You can see the markers got a lot bigger. There's an undo in here. If I decide that's too extreme, okay. So <clears throat> if I want the values to change based on the zoom level. What I will do is down here, inside the curly braces, so you see these curly braces define the all of the styles for this layer inside of the curly braces. I will create some space and I will type some square brackets. And the square brackets um, specify that I'm going to write a condition. I'm also going to add some curly braces, and the curly braces work exactly like these curly braces. They say anything um, anything inside these curly braces apply to the thing before it. And the thing before it, I'm going to write the word zoom. So I'm saying as the zoom changes, do something. And I'll say when the zoom is greater than or equal to 13. Let's make the markers bigger. And as I start to type marker, you'll see this autofill starts coming up. And I'll select marker width. And I'll make it twice as big as you zoom in. All right. So, um, so this is a simple zoom condition. I will call this kind of style, I'll call this a zoom condition, the, the condition here, and I'll call this whole style a zoom dependent style. So it depends what the zoom is, what the style will ultimately be. And when I save, we won't see a difference, actually, because if you look down here in the bottom left, we're at zoom level 12. So if I zoom in once, we should see a pretty big difference. You see that it went up to 15. 
as I zoom out, they zoom, uh, they got smaller. And if that's not clear enough for you, let's just make it even bigger just so it's more clear. All right. I think there are there are situations where, um, for example, if you plan for people to use this map on a phone, you might want the markers to get quite a bit bigger as you zoom in to make it easier to click on those markers. So that's the situation where I might use zoom dependent styles here. Um, I might even add more steps. So greater than or equal to 13 or greater than or equal to 15. And I'll make it even bigger. So now as we get closer and closer, the dots keep getting bigger. And you can do this as many times as you want. What I would always recommend is that you do this from smallest to largest. When Cardo is drawing the map, it's going to first use these styles. Then it's going to get here and see, oh, the zoom is greater than or equal to 13. I should make it 10, make the marker width 10. When the zoom is greater than or equal to 15, here, it's going to come here and see this and apply it, make it 15. You can do similar styling um, with lines and polygons. Um, you'll want to add the line and polygon layers to your Cardo map as you would any other kinds of layers. And you'll also want to look at the Cardo CSS documentation. You'll see this on the Cardo site here. And the properties you can use when styling are grouped by the type of uh, the type of thing that you're styling. So if we look under markers, you can um, see mostly these are things that you do with points. So for example, marker width see marker width takes a number. The default is 10 if you didn't put anything in there. Same with marker height. Uh, so if we added a marker height here, see that they become oblong. What else? There's marker allow overlap. If you read the description for that, shows or hides overlapping markers on a map. Uh, it's it defaults to false so that it, uh, if they overlap, it picks a marker that um, that overlaps with the rest and hides the overlapping ones. So you can see that our style is setting that to true right now. If I, let's find a place where they overlap. Here's one right here. If I set this to false, we should only have one of those. You can see there's only one there now. See, no overlaps anymore. Um, and this could be one place where maybe at some point, once you zoom in, you want to show all of the markers no matter what. So once you get into zoom level 15, show everything. So so these show up now, but they don't show up here. So that could be one situation where you want to use um, zoom dependent styling also.
Okay. Um, the one other thing I thought I would show is markers, uh, marker file. You can use an SVG for your style, and what this takes is you say marker file colon and then URL and in parentheses you put the URL somewhere online of an SVG that can be used. Okay, um, so that's those are zoom dependent styles. There are also attribute dependent styles. So why don't we look at that? If you go to the data for your layer, you can see all of the attributes that are available. Um, one thing I might want to do is look at the data by the number of injuries. I could say if the number of injuries is greater than or equal to one, style them differently. And so I can do that here. And instead of saying zoom here, I say the name of the attribute. Uh, maybe greater than zero. It doesn't always have to be greater than. Um, maybe when they're greater than zero, marker fill becomes uh, red or something like that. And when I save, now it's very clear which uh, which of the points have injuries and which don't. You can... I'm not sure why that's not working for red. It's working for other things. Uh, you can... You can click on a color and change it here. So maybe I don't want just bright red, but maybe I want a slightly, slightly less harsh red. Um, so you can do that. And it doesn't have to be just one property in here. We can have multiple properties. Um, maybe I want the fill opacity to be lower in general. And I want the fill opacity to be a little bit higher when you're talking about a point with injuries and I just wrote it in the incorrect place. So you can start to see the difference there. <clears throat> okay. So you can have as many of these conditions in your C Cardo CSS as you find useful. Just make sure that everything you do happens between these two curly braces. If you put things outside of these curly braces, in my experience, Cardo CSS, Cardo will just ignore that Cardo CSS. So if I said, um, actually marker width 100, and I save, it doesn't do anything. It just doesn't see this. And the same would go if we had zoom greater than 15 and marker width 100. It's just not going to see anything outside of these curly braces. And that can be really frustrating if you're trying to style things and your styles are just not happening. So keep an eye out for that. I recommend indenting everything inside these curly braces over by one. So in the case of these properties, you can see that it's indented over two spaces, one level, and then inside other conditional statements, I will indent everything inside their one. And hopefully that will make clear at a glance which styles are being applied where. If I 
wanted to make this more legible for myself later on, I could write some comments in here. Comments are code that doesn't get read as code. So between slash star and star slash, I can write whatever I want here. Style injuries differently. So I'm tracking where the injuries happened. And if it was more complicated than that, a comment might be more helpful, but you get the idea. One other thing, um, you can also do these conditions with strings. So for example, let's look at the burrow. If the burrow is queens, maybe I want to make those bigger just for fun. So starting a new condition and I'll just write out the condition and the curly braces, conditional uh, square brackets and the curly braces. I'll say bro equals and the value that I'm comparing it to sh always has to be in single quotes like that. So if the bro is equal to queens, and this is case sensitive, so you want to make sure if it's using all uppercase, you're using all uppercase too. And I'll say marker width 20. And let's see if that worked. So you see that it kind of is working. but it stops working at zoom level 13. And the reason for that is once you get to zoom level 13, this condition starts taking effect. So um, it was marker width 20 in Queens, and then Cardo got to this condition and said, oh, actually it should be 10. All of them should be 10. Uh, so one way you might deal with that is just put this at the end, like that. And now it should always be 20, which is fine. Um, that's probably the way I would deal with it. So keep in mind that the most, the condition closest to the bottom of the code is going to be the condition that wins if um, all else being equal. Okay, so I decided to add a polygon layer just just so it could be, uh, so you can see it concretely. Um, so I'm going to go into my polygon layer. This is the boroughs of New York. I can change the style here as usual, um, but maybe I want to go into the Cardo CSS and tweak it a little bit more. If I do, you're going to see it looks a little bit different from markers. The way in which it's different is there are two statements here. One is for the polygon fill, so everything inside the polygon. The other is for the outline. And you'll see that the first one has polygon attributes, polygon properties, I should say, and the second one has line properties. So if I made the line, if I wanted to make the line larger, I can do that. It looks terrible with 50, um, but that gives you an idea of um, how these two statements are different, right? Everything else works exactly as you would expect it to. You can come back to this documentation, you can go up to the top of the page and go straight to the polygon related um, properties. Same for lines. If you went down to lines, you can play around with that. Um, for example, you can make the line smoother. Uh, that's a value between zero and one. Let's go all the way to one and see what the result is. Okay, what is it at zero? Mm. It's 
pretty subtle. Uh, but you can see, for example, here, you can see the fill coming out here, and that's because of the smoothing. You can see line smooth zero means it precisely follows the edge of the polygon. Line smooth one, it's going to do whatever it wants to make it a little bit smoother. And um, as it says in the documentation, if you give it a value greater than one, it makes wild looping geometries. Um, fun. That might be useful sometimes. Exactly as you might with markers, you can write zoom conditions in here. You might want to make the polygons stand out more when you're up here, and then as you zoom in, make them go away. They're no longer useful at a certain point. Uh, so I might make the um, zoom greater than, equal, greater than or equal to 12 polygon opacity zero. So we have polygon, no polygon. Okay. So when you're editing Cardo CSS, you have gone off the track and are no longer using the user interface. If you go back to values, it's going to fade that out and it's going to say, hey, you've been working with Cardo CSS. You can either continue working with Cardo CSS or you can clear all the styles. So if I wanted to go back to using the user interface and abandon Cardo CSS, I can hit clear here and it will give me this. If I go back to Cardo CSS, I just lost whatever changes I made. So it's important to be aware of that. That is a thing that's going to happen sometimes to you. Another thing that um, I think you might find useful is you can make changes um, in your in the interface like this. and say, okay, what kind of Cardo CSS did that make? You can make those changes and then go back to the Cardo CSS and see exactly how those changes were made. So you can see the polygon fill. Um, it's a little bit more complicated, but what it's doing is it's looking at the attribute, the borough code, splitting it up by quantiles, which is fine for this, it's five. Uh, five buckets, and then it's setting those to these colors. And that's the same thing you'll see in the interface here. Right? These are the color values. Okay. So if you are curious about how the interface is making certain things happen, you can come in here, change some things, and then look at the generated Cardo CSS and see, oh, it added another Cardo CSS statement for the labels, and this is what they look like. Okay. All right, so that's a quick jump into using Cardo CSS and Cardo to change your styles. Hope that is useful.